Hello everyone. I'm Becky with Piece of Cake and I appreciate you taking the time today to have a time out with me. Behind me, I don't know if you can see. Nope, you can't. Jim just leaped up onto the thing, onto the ironing board behind me um, just to throw me off a little bit. So hello. Uh, I have good news to share. Well, it's good news for us and I think you'll think it's good news too. Lorna, my daughter-in-law, who will answer comments today, usually she does, um, she had her first scary mammogram, her first mammogram, and it was one of those, you know, so many of us have been through this, I can't tell you how many of those I've had, but Lorna was lucky, she went to a, a really good mammogram person, and so her result was scary, but she went back today and got the second mammogram, and it's all good. It's, well, it's reasonably good. She has a little benign lymph nodes that they're gonna keep an eye on. And Lorna said it was okay to share this because, here's the thing, most of, we all have breasts. Even men can get breast cancer. So just saying, we all have breasts, and it's important to keep up with them and check them. And if you go and you get a scary mammogram, Take a deep breath and don't, don't lose your mind until you get the follow-up because a lot of times it is like it was with Lorna and like it has always been with me and with Lorna's mom, it has worked out okay. So that's the good news. I just shared that and now I'm going to tell you that behind me, <laughs> can you hear the cat? Behind me are my birds in Toyland quilt, quilts. That was, sorry, that that one, no, I'm pointing wrong. That one was my first one. It's mostly done with wool. And the other one is mostly done with needle turn hand applique. These classes are on Creative Spark. The books won't be out. The book won't be out until next year. But there are still a few openings in the second and third group of classes and they start in like a week and a half or so one of them does and one a little later and i just wanted to give you the heads up in case you are interested in taking the birds in toyland classes on creative spark and i think uh lorna will post a link to that or you can find it on my website okay today I am going to share with you the no sew pin cushions. I have shared it online on YouTube long ago in the past, but there's a little more I'm going to share today. So what is it and where can you put them? That's the first video. I am pretty sure that the first pin cushion I put coils of wool inside was this. It's a classic, isn't it? I don't know. I think it's Victorian. I bought this pin cushion at an antique store in Tyler, Texas. Linda was with me. This could be 30 years ago that I bought it. And at the time, I thought it was Victorian. And when I bought it, it had red satin up here. That's where you put the pins in this red satin. Okay. That was just a little over the top. For me, I could not go there, but I still liked it. I still do. I can't seem to make myself let go of it. So I took off the icky red satin, and you can see I didn't, I didn't refinish it or anything. I just peeled it off. The red had been glued down. And then I wrapped felted wool into a coil and this was hand felted wool. Now that the pin cushion is out of the leg and you can see the leg was broken before, it still is broken. Um, I can tell it's been a while since I've cleaned this off and you know how I clean it? I do this. I just give it a little haircut on top. Not a lot. Just to freshen it up. And I could push the center up just a bit so that I can get to that. It's subtle and maybe I notice it more than you do, but it seems a little nicer. And then I take my coiled wool and put it right back into the leg, just like that. 
<laughs> I can't help it. I think it's cute. So, where else have I put coiled wool? I have put coiled wool, oh, in this wonderful bear. This is an antique, I think it's a black forest bear, and the little thing comes out. This is not, it needs a little haircut too. This thing, when I got it, was just an empty little bowl. In fact, I can pull this out. You can see it's the same, that same batch of felted wool here. The underside's kind of pretty. And that hasn't been exposed to dust and light, so I can just turn that over. Oh, nice. I'll just do that. So now he's got a Fresh, freshly stirred bowl of wool. And then I've got my Hummel. This was my grandmother's Hummel. I love this. And I put wool here because having those little baskets empty just didn't appeal to me. Now, I haven't used this in a long time. And see, the same thing is true here in that it's been out exposed to humidity and light for a long enough time that it's a little duller on this side than it is on this. And when I say for a long time, I may not have flipped this in 20 years. But I think now that I'm doing this, I'm going to flip that and make it, make it look a little fresher. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to have to use a tool to pull that out, and the ends of my scissors are working fine. Oh yeah, look there. I will just flip that around. How big do you make these? As big as you need to. I know this fit before, and I want it to have a tight fit. So I'm going to push that in. Just let it go in. Perfect. I like it that she's carrying something. I also have this pin cushion. It's got much deeper strips. This is a pin cushion that I use. He's just cute. He was not expensive. He's a pretend Hummel. I love this guy. And the shell on his back, see he's swimming in the ocean and I don't know why he's got a shell on his back, but the shell on his back is really very open. And I've used this pin cushion a lot before, not so much now, but in the past. And I made two coils to conform to this space there. Okay, so I've shown you what you can do with coiled wool. Next up, I'll show you how you do it. Okay, so a little more on the where else you can put them. Um, you can put them, I have this, this is, <laughs> This is a thing, a planter I got as part of a white elephant years and years and years ago. And I have always loved it. And I didn't like him empty and I wanted him sitting, sitting out. So I put wool in the top of him. And I could put stuff in here like pins. But why do I not have so many pin cushions out now? It's because of Jim the cat. Jim the cat finds my pin cushions, picks the pins out, and he doesn't exactly try to eat them, but I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> he spreads them around. So I don't, I don't put actual pins in my pin cushions so much anymore. I look forward to the day when he doesn't give a rip anymore about pins. I hope that happens soon. Okay, so I've also seen um, really cute little pin cushions made to fit inside salt cellars, little crystal salt cellars. Anything with a cavity is a possible pin cushion. All right, now, rolling wool. It's not that hard, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway because it's kind of hypnotic. Here we go. You can cut your own felted wool from whatever wool you've got. I have in this shop, these are strips from in the patch. I have two different kinds of sets. I have this kind of colorway and this kind of colorway, and it will vary because they're just different when they come in. And the strips are half an inch to five eighths of an inch wide. 
I'm going to make a coil for this thing. It's one of those gizmos that holds an aerial fern and the aerial fern got stolen by Jim and taken off and killed somewhere. So she's had an empty head for a long time and I think she needs to have something in her head. Well, she might like a blue, blue head. All right, if she wants a blue head, I think I'm going to combine some blues. When you are thinking about how you want to coil these together, you can guesstimate on the coil length because you can add more as needed and you can stop coiling and cut off if you get enough. I'm going to line up the left edge of these strips and try and keep that relatively straight. I'm going to start at this end and start and coil a nice tight coil. When you're coiling two colors together, the coil that is on the outside will go a farther distance. So the inside coil will begin to lift up. It'll make a hill. You'll need to, every now and then, reset your strips to get them lined up. If you need to stop and evaluate where you are in your coiling process, take a straight pin and push it through the whole coil so that you can pick it up and give it a look and see if you like where you are. You can also judge the size so I can look and say, yep, I'm going to need more. I could, if I wanted to, add a new color. I want to add it, does it matter if I add it to the inside or the outside? Well, I'm going to add it to the outside. And I think what I'm going to do is take this pin and push it through there. And then pull the pin back. And again, I'm coiling this tightly. This is not rocket science. All you're doing is coiling these colors together. If I want to check my progress, I'm going to take the straight pin and do that again. I'm going to check the head of my, th oh yeah, I've got plenty. So, what I want to do is back this off just a little bit and I'm going to cut the top strip. Coil a little more and then I'm going to cut the next strip and that dark blue is going to be my outside. And as you fiddle with this you really don't want to lose your coil. So lock it in with a pin. Can I? Yeah, and I've got way too much wool there. I'm going to have to back this off again and trim my inside piece. And I'm going to trim the next one. And I like to stagger that just a little bit. I think I can make. I think I can make that work. I can take a half inch sequin pin and push it in right here to hold that strip while I manipulate this into place and I can decide which side of this I like the most. Get it started going in and then find your tools. And I have these lovely Appliquick tools that are going to be perfect for helping me work this down. I didn't measure to see how deep the hole on the top of this little thing is. 
I just guesstimated and that is a really nice fit. If I really cared how much of the wool was going to stick up or if it was going to be recessed, I would have measured the depth of the hole, but I don't care. And now look, she's got, it's like she's got a little bitty, a little bitty hairdo right up there, little different hairdo. And what's nice with this is she would look very cute with pins in her head. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Okay, so next up, I'll show you the pin cushion in the tin. <laughs> I can't help it. I just love these things. <laughs> I, I, I look around the house for things I can shove wool into. All right, so, oh, I know what I was going to say. I'm sorry I kept wandering low on the camera, but I, I did. I'm sorry. But I don't think you lost the flow, so I didn't go back and refilm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, let's look at the pin cushion in a tin because these things are really handy. This Altoids tin is my favorite traveling pin cushion. I just, I love it. It's a good size. It's not very deep. It holds two coils of wool, two fairly good sized coils of wool. When I've got needles or pins that are long, you know, longer than this, I send them in sideways. My half inch pins, they fit straight up and down. Pretty much everything else goes in a little bit sideways. It may not hold a huge number of pins, but I don't usually need a huge number of pins when I'm on the road. I just need a few at, at a time. This is a tin, similar tin, not quite as big. <laughs> it's got Scotty from Star Trek on it. Can't, can't help but like that. So I could put one giant coil in here. I could put two smaller coils. I could put four small coils. I can fill it however I want. I think what I'm going to do is one big coil. And I'm starting in the center with yellow. And then I'm going to cut that one right there. And add that to the roll. If I'm doing one big coil, it's going to start getting a little bit out of control, I think. And you can tell here it's gotten big enough I can hold it and pull. And what I want to do is take a half inch pin and I'm going to put that right in there. And I'm going to cut the yellow. And take the orange around so that now my orange is on the outside and you notice I left that pin inside there to help hold my coil firm. It's not really going to get in the way at all. I'm going to pick up this light blue. Let's see if I can hold that there without pinning it. Maybe. feed that in. I could have added another pin. I just didn't want to. Now, as I'm rolling, I want to make sure it's still pretty on top. And these strips are not absolutely the same size. That's okay. I'm going to cut that and add this blue. I don't think so. I think I want this blue. Oh no, I want this blue. I'm going from the orange and blues to that. And I think I'm going to cut my turquoise. I'm going to place this on top. And then I'm going to find a half inch sequin pin. Yes, I've got one right there to hold that in. Ooh, ooh. want it to stay put. 
what I like about these is you don't have to sew anything. You're just coiling wool strips and you get to control the size and the colors. Now here I'm going to take a long pin so that I can keep the coil together while I test its fit. And then I'm going to use my tool. Now, if you don't have the fancy Appliquick tools, which by the way, I think you should, they come in handy for a lot of things, but if you don't have the handy Appliquick tools, because let's face it, they are a little on the pricey side, could you use a wooden cuticle stick? Yeah, yeah, you could. They work. The thing about the cuticle stick is it's got a texture and a finish, so this is slick and you can maybe maneuver a little more inside the coil without it catching and pulling. But there you go. Pin cushion in a tin. If I wanted the wool to not fill the tin quite so fully, I could have used narrower strips. It would have been fine, but I like it just like that. Okay, it's easy, right? Now, the thing about the tins is that the Scotty tin has a really flat lid. So putting tall pins in there, even sideways, would be a tight fit. The wool will compress a little bit, so it'll work. But the Altoids tin, it looks flat on top, but it's a little bit rounded. That little bit rounded is kind of nice. So if you're shopping for tins to use for this, a little rounder is better than totally flat. What else? Can I just say these things, all of these make incredibly good gifts. I'll come back to that thought because now I want to sh show you this next thing. Um, I'm just going to show you because you'll like it. I think you'll like it. Here we go. This is a bottle cap from a bottle of wine. I am using a giant nail to make these holes. I'm hammering down toward my wool mat with my dainty hammer that I got from my grandfather back in the day. You want to make holes big enough for round elastic to go through. And be careful to hammer the nails from the outside in because there are going to be little sharp this is on the inside of that. I didn't have any round elastic, but I did have a package that had, you know, round elastic and it's got like that shoestring thing going on. So I'm going to use those little metal ends to make it easier to whammer that through. Otherwise, if I didn't have these little metal caps to get that through, I would make the holes big enough until I could get the elastic to feed through. Now, on one side could, oh yeah, look at that. On one side, I can definitely use that metal. And I'm going to because it's already there, so why not? So I'm going to measure my finger to see how long I want the elastic to be. For me, this will be the hard part. It's going to be guesstimating where to put the knot, I think, right about there. That seems about right. I'm going to cut that elastic right there. The knot is going to stick up into the wool, and this side will be flat. I think the wool will conform to where the knot is. I guess I'll find out because I haven't done this before. Okay, so now I'm going to make a coil again and I think what I might do is use up some of these little bits that I've cut off previously. So I'm going to use up some of the scrap pieces, those little bits that I cut off because they're wool too. 
why can't I do that? I find it easier to at least begin rolling the wool flat. I'm going to put a piece of that in there. And then I'll put that one in there. This is a manual dexterity test. That's what it is. If you have problems with your hands that mean you're having trouble with this, working on top of the wool mat is not a bad idea because you can pin through your coil into the wool and hold it flat to help you rearrange and roll. So if I wanted to stop right there and mess around with that, I could. When it gets to a good size, pick it up. You can pull, make sure it's staying tight. Skewer it with a pin as needed. Get it rolled up. Oh yeah, I'm not there, but I'm close. Skewer it with the pin. I want to get those edges in. This is a tight enough fit that it is not going to go anywhere. Manipulate the edges of the wool into the cap. That's pretty nice. And I didn't want to push the wool too far down because having a little bit of wool above the sharp edge of the cap is nice. To finish this, I'm going to want to wrap it with wool and glue that in place. So I'm going to go cut a strip of wool that fits, get some glue, and I'll be back. I've got my Aline's Tacky Glue. It's the quick dry tacky glue. I have a lot of these little sticks so I can come through here and move the glue, smooth it out, see, and try not to make a mess with it. This is the strip I cut. It's three quarters of an inch wide. I'm going to try to be very tidy coming around because I would like to not get glue on the outside of the wool. I think I'm going to cut mine so that it butts up next to that other strip. Once I give that time to dry, it will be good to go. You know, that's pretty cute. Okay, can I just say, that's pretty cute, and I don't know what finger people always wear these on. I think maybe on thumbs works like a charm and there may be, I don't know if you can see, there may be one side that lifts up a little bit bigger where the knot is but really it doesn't show that much and that's a win. I can see these being a hit if you give them away or if you sold them like the next time your guild has a fundraiser. Now I have this that a very nice quilter made for me once years ago that is way fancier than this. But you could, for this outside strip, do something that had a little embroidery, or you could put a ribbon there, you could put trim. You could put all kinds of things on this and give them to people and they would enjoy them. And the other thing I got to thinking was there might be there probably is an interesting way to make this not be a finger pin cushion, but to be a pin cushion that was over by your sewing machine. Like, I don't know if you'd want to use uh, rare earth magnets on the underside of this so that it stuck to something, but maybe. Y'all are creative. You can figure that out. So, let me think what else. Um, I think that's it. I think that's what I've got. These are fast and they're easy and I know I was going to come back to this. Most of us are getting out and about a little bit more and you are going to be seeing your quilting friends um, at whatevers and 
these these all of these little coiled wool treats are a lovely treat to share with your quilty sewing friends so it is 30 minutes and i believe that's all i've got um that is my email and let me say i got a really good email earlier today uh, suggesting a topic that I think will happen next week and I've gotten another email that, so I, there's topics coming and with that said I look forward I do I look forward to seeing you guys next week at two o'clock central time for a timeout and until then I hope you have many happy stitches take care have a good week bye